just to explain, Don will be in the prayer room. <laughs> I, I invite you now to close your eyes if you wish, to relax into your chair, to be immersed in your inner center of divine energy. And at this time, we realize that all over the world, people of different faiths, including Baha'i, are celebrating their faith in their way. We respect and honor all of these people, all of the faiths in the world, all serene and genuine in their desire to be closer to their spiritual center. We hold in prayer unity of New Westminster, BC, and unity of the Valley, White Rock, BC. We also hold in prayer anyone who's not with us in body, anybody who might be far away, uh, anybody that we love, who is in our heart, and if you wish to whisper the name of those people right now, please do so. The light of God brightens our day. And today, sunshine, real sunshine, is brightening our day. But when the sun is not available, we realize that with the dawning of every day, we have the capacity to connect with God in our inner light. We are reminded of the truth we already know. One with the divine light of God, we can do anything. Like the rising sun, whether it's real sun out there or the sun in our heart, the light of God brightens our view. The light of God reminds us that we have the power within to live the life we want to live. We view each day as a new opportunity to more fully express our divine potential and to experience our good. And with that divine light in our minds and in our hearts, we say, thank you. And so it is. Amen. Thanks, Pauline. And now for our message from the Daily Word, brought to you by Silent Unity. In the silence. In the silence, I find peace. In the silence, I find myself. Rather than allow my mind to be easily swayed by outer circumstances, I look beyond appearances to the truth of my being. I do this by turning within to a place of peace, the silence. As the words in Christian healing remind readers, to realize God, we must quiet our outer thoughts and enter into the stillness, peace, and harmony of spirit. When I turn within to pray, any negative or limiting thoughts dissipate. Here in the silence, I am one with spirit. In this conscious awareness of my higher power, I recognize my spiritual attributes that are mine through divine grace. Here, I find the strength I seek, the love that sustains me, and the peace to soothe my soul. As I move back into my day, I take those elements with me. I am renewed in mind and heart. Keep silence and hear, O Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 9. This song about hope. And uh, hope fulfilled, too. Jordan, begin the best 
teachings and is currently studying for her doctorate degree and completed, right? No, sorry. In, that's why you should never, you know, abs absolutely advocate. Just read from the script. Um, so, she is an avid reader of spiritual teachings and is currently studying for her doctorate degree in metaphysical science through the University of Sedonia, California. Catherine is an enthusiastic member, member of Unity of London, having served on, served on the board of directors, several service committees, and loves to attend Unity Village for spiritual renewal. Catherine is also enjoying facilitating the weekly class for a course of love here at Unity of London. Catherine. Tissues, but I might cry today. <laughs> so May is a very special month for me. May has been a month of great healing and change. On May 9th, Larry and I celebrated 27 years of marriage. <laughs> but we still like each other. <laughs> and in two days, I will celebrate 33 years clean and sober. And that means I have now been sober half my life. So that feels like a miracle to me, and I'm so grateful. The topic I was given to speak about today was honoring memories. And at first that felt kind of difficult to me because it sounded to me like living in the past. And as you know, over the past few years, I have been trying very hard to let go of the past and embrace living in the present. So I took it into my heart space, I took it into prayer, and I quietly asked, is this the subject for me? And the answer I got was, you know a lot about memories. So here I am to share some memories with you. Um, I believe that memories are very powerful. And it just is interesting because power is unity's power for May. And the color is purple. So I thought what I would like to do is I would like to try to weave together how powerful memories are with how powerful our spiritual power of power is. And let's see where that takes us. Allow me to read a little bit to you from the unity.org describing the power of power. Power is the vital energy that is located at the base of the tongue. Spiritual power flows into our body from the Christ center, which is our crown chakra, and is released in the form of radiant energy through the center of the throat. Power is released by consciously speaking 
positive, powerful words of truth. When rightly used under the direction of the higher self, it will accomplish good in the world beyond our present ability to imagine. Well, that's quite a statement, isn't it? And that is written on unity.org. Well, let's hear what Charles Fillmore has to say about power. In his metaphysical dictionary, which I love and I use a lot, Charles says, power is man's innate control. That means natural, God-given. Power is man's innate control over his thoughts and feelings. Then he states, God is all power, thus all things are possible. There is a spiritual law that whatever you see in the external, you may be assured has its parallel in the mind. The same law is operating in the spiritual realm and the material realm under different masks of manifestation. Today, I believe we call this the law of attraction. Charles goes on to write, spiritual power is omnipresent, everywhere present. It is released by spiritualizing our consciousness. This divine energy will surge through us as we erase negative thoughts from consciousness and become one with God. Thank you, Charles. So, do you think your memories have power? <laughs> have your memories ever stopped you from taking a risk? Do, you re do your memories cause you to act a certain way in certain situations? Do your memories ever get in the way of your imagination? Do they ever kind of squash down that enthusiasm for doing something that you think you can't do? Why would you even think about doing this? You know what happened the last time you did it. What would make you think it would be any different this time? Is that your voice? Or is that someone else's voice? I try not to listen to that voice anymore. I believe that memories are so powerful until we use our God-given power to make the change within. Stop making the change without and start making the change within. I'd like to tell you now a little story about an eagle. Once upon a time, it's a once upon a time story, there was this beautiful mountainside that hosted a large nest with eagle eggs in it. Four large eagle eggs. And before they hatched, this earthquake shook the mountain and one of those eggs rolled out of the nest and down the mountainside into the valley and into a chicken farm. Well, all the chickens were just running around. They were so excited, something new. And then this old mother hen, she came along through the crowd and she said, well, I'll just take it on and I'll nurse this egg and I'll hatch it and, and I'll take care of it. And that's what she did. And not long down the road, this egg hatched and out came this beautiful baby eagle. Now the sad part of the story is that the eagle was raised to be a chicken. And then the eagle started to believe he was a chicken. And yet something inside of him kept screaming out saying, I know there's more, I know there's more. And one day they were playing in the yard like chickens do and, and uh, he fell down and he looked up and he saw these beautiful big birds soaring through the sky and he said out loud, oh my, if I could just soar like those birds just once. And the chickens all started laughing at him and said, you can't soar like that, you're a chicken. Chickens don't soar. And so he kind of held back, and, but he didn't stop dreaming and he didn't stop watching them and he just kept wishing and hoping that one day he could soar with those beautiful birds. And every time he let it slip out of his mouth, they would say, stop it, you're a chicken. If you were ever up that high, you'd fall out of the sky and die. So eventually, he stopped dreaming. He stopped thinking about soaring with those beautiful birds. And after a long life, that eagle died as a chicken. So what's the moral of this story? 
Don't listen to the chickens in your life. Make your decision to soar like an eagle. Be the eagle. Be the light. Start to live in your higher consciousness and start radiating that beautiful, powerful energy of love and light and positivity. Which one feels better to you? How do I know this is true? That the moral of this story is that if you listen to the chickens in your life, you will live and die a chicken? How do I know that? Because every incarnated being has the same powers. That I know is true. The same wee small voice that begs us to soar. The ego is inside of you. It is your light. It is your higher consciousness. It is your Holy Spirit. Just take that in for a minute. Now is your time to soar. Now is not the time for you to gather all your chickens around you and try to get them to soar with you. No, this is about the law of attraction. As I soar, as I reach, as I grow, I attract more eagles, more power, more joy. <laughs>